Welcome to Find Your Way Home. This is Christine Watkins. This is part one of an interview that Hollywood actress from Mexico, Martha Igareda, gave with me. It is on the warning and the coming illumination of conscience of all souls. And we're going to talk about why it's important to prepare for this event, how to prepare, and much more. She is delightful. Please stay tuned. Christine, I am so more than thrilled, more than excited. I am, I don't even know how to find the words, emocionadísima, I can <laughs> say that in Spanish, <laughs> that, that you are here. And I, I got to say that the, the way things happened and how we came together mm -hmm. for me specifically is a message that comes from above. Mm. I have your book, it's right here. It's in Spanish because there's also a Spanish edition of the book, also in English. It's called The Warning, El Aviso. And my mom gave me this book because when I was little, like around, I don't know, 9, 10, 11, I had certain dreams that would come to me and I would wake up saying to my mom, mom, in our lifetime, we're going to live this and this and this. It, it was a very powerful experience huh. that I lived, huh. specifically in a time in which I was very close to one of my aunts who prays the rosary every day. So she was living with us and she started saying to me, hey, do you want to pray the rosary? And I started praying the rosary and she taught me how to pray it. And I was so into it and so excited. Now I'm back doing it, by the way. But at that time, the things started to happen to me in my dreams. I had very interesting premonitions in my dreams. And I would wake up not only things about my family, but also things that would then end up coming true in my family, mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. things that I started, we started experiencing in life. I told my parents when I was 10 years old that I had a dream that the United States was going to have an American president that was going to be African-American. Mm -hmm. So my parents at the time were like, wait, what? What are you talking about? That probably won't happen in our lifetime, you know? And then it ended up happening. So things like that. Anyway, going back, I want to acknowledge you for the incredible work that you've done with this book. Like I said, mom gave it to me probably five months ago because she said, I think some of the things that you've experienced in your dreams some other people around the world have been experiencing, not in their dreams, but in their lives. And when I read it, I was in shock because of what it expresses and everything. And so this is a beautiful research that you've done. And I'm so grateful for you having done this work. And on behalf of a lot of people out there that I, I know for a fact that are going to love the book and people who have read it already feel more awakened before because of the book. Praise God. So You're welcome. Thank God you. gets all the glory. Thank you. Yes. And so I want to ask you, what got you to do this? To interview all these people who've been having a similar experience of awakening of the consciousness. We're going to talk about, about that a little bit more. But what made you do this research and put all these stories together? Well, I think when we explain what it is to the listeners, if they don't know already, um, one will understand why when I learned about what it was, I thought, why doesn't the world know about this? This mm -hmm. is so important, so important to know in advance, so important to live through well. And so I was, I was confounded. I was confused. And I thought, you know, when you think there's a missing gap that needs to be filled, God needs somebody to do something. Yes. And I certainly didn't want it to be me. <laughs> <laughs> so I just saw the problem and I thought, Lord, people need to know about this. And so then I realized, oh, I see. Mm -hmm. I'd already written some books. And so I thought, well, are you, are you asking me to write a book? And if you are, 
Lord, first of all, I want to know if this is real. It has to be true. I don't want to deceive anyone. I want mm -hmm. to make sure that this is you and that you actually mean what you say is going to happen. Number two, I would like to meet people who've already experienced what's called an illumination of their conscience. And we'll explain what that is, mm -hmm. who in a moment, they can believe in God or not believe in God forcefully against their own will, see their lives in lieu of their own sin. And if you if these people exist, show them to me, and then I'll know if you want me to write this book or not. So I kid you not, it's been many, many years. When did this come out? It's been, I, it took me years to write this book. So way back when I said that prayer to God, I had that conversation with him. And I kid you not, within two months, just eight weeks, I had ended up knowing 10 people <laughs> who had an illumination of their yes. conscience and they let me know their stories and share them with the world on top of that. So that was a big, big sign for me because it's been almost 10 years since or more than that. And I haven't, I, I, I struggle to find one. Mm -hmm. So it was an eight week period of time. And yeah, even uh, my spiritual director was a beautiful nun. I told her, I said, God's kind of putting this on my heart. And <laughs> then, then she looked at me, sweetest nun in the world. Just, I love her. So it's just saying, she said, that happened to me. So things like, oh, <laughs> you know, and I feel like this also in a way happened to me too, because I'm telling you, mom gave me the book and, and then I was fascinated by it, worried about the world, yeah. um, praying more. It made me feel closer to God. And then the, this is the most magical, beautiful thing happened. I started my, this podcast called Infinitos and in one morning, when was this probably like less than a month ago, I woke up feeling in my heart. I think I've been praying the rosary the wrong way. I felt like I had this information, something happened in my dreams. And I woke up with this knowing of, oh, the way to pray is that every single word that we are saying should be a gift, like a beautiful jewel, like a beautiful rose, like a beautiful flower that we're giving to the Lord and the Virgin. And, you know, like, like that, it should come from that place. And when you feel it from your heart, beautiful, miraculous things can happen. So I wake up that morning and I pray that way, that specific way. And then at the end of praying, I said, Please, God, guide my steps. How can I use my voice to serve you? What can I do? Guide my steps. And I promise you, probably like an hour later, ping, my WhatsApp starts pinging, and I look at it, and it's one of the producers. I got the of chills. The movie. I got yes. the chills. Yeah. And she says, Marta, would you like to interview Christine Watkins? And I just went, oh my God. I called my mom immediately. Mom, you're not going to believe what just happened. Because I was, and Armando, who's my producer, who's here listening while we're recording this interview, uh, he knows it, you've been a person on the list of the people that I've been wanting to interview. Mm. But like, how do, how do we get a hold of you? It was like a whole thing. And then it just happened on its own after that prayer hmm. and so the same way I feel I resonate with what you're saying because I feel in a way there's no coincidence God's doing this. something bigger which is yeah. God doing this and 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 so with that being said and feeling so grateful I want to ask you what is the warning so the warning has been explained to us through many mystics, Catholic mystics primarily. St. Faustina Kowalska, the saint of divine mercy, is well known by people in the Catholic world. She is one of them. A pope. We have Elizabeth Kindleman, who is another mystic, the foundress of the 
movement of the flame of love of the Immaculate Heart of Mary in the worldwide church. We have so many, many people. And I, the, the interesting thing is after writing the book, I learned about even more people. There's a man in Colombia who mm -hmm. is prior or hermano. Agustin del Divino Corazón. He started an order, Los Cierros Reparadores de los Sagrados Corazones. <laughs> that was really good Spanish. Thank you. I wrote it down. <laughs> <I wrote it laughs> down. <laughs> so he was given many, he's a locutionist. A locutionist means that they hear interiorly or exteriorly the voice of someone in heaven. And mm -hmm. it's very clear. And he's written down uh, volumes, I think 45 books now just come to him, something not humanly possible. But he got a lot of messages about the warning as well. So mm -hmm. Sister Anna Ali, a daughter of the Good Shepherd, who her bishop is trying to see if she can be a canonized saint. He's pushing that forward. She wept tears of blood for the sins of the world once a week for 26 years. Oh. He got messages at the warning. So those two are... I, after after this book that's what it looks like in english so the thing is god keeps verifying mm -hmm. that he has spoken about this even more so than what i put in here what i did put in there is father stefano gobi luz de maria de bonilla she's a stigmatist and beautiful holy woman her messages have what's called the imprimatur of the church which means they've been studied by the church and found without error and we have authentic apparitions in he germany not many people know about this but it's an approved apparition in the 1940s of four children and one of those visionaries received word about what the warning was and that it was going to happen and we needed to prepare and then we have garabandal which is not approved by the church nor is it discounted by the church it's in mm -hmm. a middle category and a lot about the warning and in spanish called el aviso was revealed by our Blessed Mother. So Jesus and Mary as well, through visionaries, have told us about this. And what it is, it's a moment in time. And what's happening in these messages as they continue through certain mystics is to say that it will happen in our generation. And that's that's the, the alert. That's the wake-up call. That's why he's doing this podcast. He wants to let his people know that there will be a moment in time when all light on earth is extinguished. So darkness will be darker than night. And then suddenly day will be brighter than day. Okay. And in this blinding light, a cross will appear in the sky wherever you are. Jesus will be on that cross in the sky. And through the holes where he was wounded, where he was crucified, Bright rays will come from his wounds into every single soul on earth. And for a period of time, earthly time lasting from about five to 15 minutes, mm -hmm. every person on earth will get a life review. They will go through their entire life. And this will not be something that they control. It will simply happen. And in this moment, they will see and feel every sin. And so the ones that people have confessed in the sacrament of confession, also called the sacrament of reconciliation, will not be experienced with very much pain. But those that we haven't confessed, it will be very shocking. It will be a wake up call. And when we go through that, what people don't necessarily know when it comes to sin or when it comes to holiness and acts of love is that every sin, even in our mind, has a reverberation that goes out through time. So I wake up angry or upset and I snap at my son. My son goes to school. He mm -hmm. hits another kid. That kid comes home, puts his father over the edge. The father has a drink. He beats his wife. So we don't we don't think that way. We don't think communally. And in Hollywood, I'm sure you're aware of this one picture on the screen. It could produce lust or it could produce repentance of heart. You yeah. know, we, we have so much power with our actions that we don't, we don't always think about the world. We think, well, I wanted to do it. It's what I thought, mm -hmm. you know, it was, it was great. It was a good opportunity. We've, lo we've lost our sense of God. We've lost our sense 
of how we're all so interconnected. So that will be revealed in the warning. Also, what will be revealed is that there is a God. Mm -hmm. So no one after this period of time can say with legitimacy, granted, we can all go back into denial and blindness. We all do that very well. Mm -hmm. But God will reveal who he is. And so when we're going through that, we'll know through knowledge and through feeling where we would end up were we to die at that very moment. Is it going to be heaven? Is it going to be purgatory? Is it going to be hell? Mm -hmm. So I wish that there were more people, I would love to be one of them, <laughs> I can't claim to be, who if I were to die right now, mm -hmm. I death is like just walking into another room. Okay. But what's the room that we're room that we're going to walk into? If mm -hmm. I were to die right now, would I walk into paradise? That's my goal. But am mm -hmm. I, am I perfected in all the virtues? Am I like the Virgin Mary? Oof. I mean, if I'm really honest with myself, Oof. am, yeah. Am I like Jesus? Am I like the Virgin Mary? Well, I got a ways to go. So I'm going to see exactly the ways to go that I have. And those who would go to purgatory, they will feel mm -hmm. what it's like to be in that level of purgatory, in that state. Those who would go to hell Oof. will feel what it's like to be in hell. If, during those 15 minutes. During or... those 15 minutes. So it's a complete, it sounds horrific but the horror is only what we would put on ourselves it could be beautiful i mean imagine a mother Teresa of calcutta going through such a thing mm -hmm. she gets to see all the life she gets to see how you know she gets to see the goodness yeah. that's what we want to work towards as human beings because it's very similar the warning is very very similar to what's called our particular judgment which every single person will go through when they die Every single person gets a life review at death. And so this is the biggest act of mercy God has ever given the world since the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because imagine him saying to, to those of us on the wrong path, this is actually where you could end up. Is this what you want? Is it's this a chance. It's like he's giving us a chance. He's giving everyone Everything. a chance because he doesn't want to lose a single soul it breaks his heart people for the listeners know that there is a heaven there is a hell there is a purgatory and every day we actually there's no separation between our souls and those places those states today right now i am standing my soul Yes, mm -hmm. it's on earth, but it's also in heaven, purgatory, or hell. That's mm -hmm. why when we come across someone so holy, so selfless, so pure of heart, so beautiful, there's, there's a glow about mm -hmm. them. There's yeah. love. There's something we recognize. And when we come across someone who's full of darkness, there's also something that mm -hmm. we feel and that we recognize. And so... This is a chance. It's a correction of the conscience of the world gone astray. And in, for instance, the church approved me uh, messages at He Germany that I just mentioned. He says, you in the world right now are worse than before the flood. That oh my goodness. This is, this, this, is, this is before Noah's flood. The flood. So we are. We're, and he also says we're worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. And you know what? I, I would, I would agree with that. I would agree with that because there's so much that the media can do so much that it could happen at home. So it's that we get sometimes depending on what we're watching, this is this this I believe our souls can be in danger for the things that we can watch. Oh, absolutely. And in 
in today, I feel like the things, sometimes you see a commercial or a billboard and you see a woman basically naked, right? That can incite the feeling of lust yes, in somebody, exactly. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And we take it as it's normal. No. You know, a, a lot of people, I mean, there's, there's so many things that today feels to me, at least maybe I'm more conservative, but I am happy read it in that way I think wait a second this cannot be okay like what are we showing to our children in the it's world okay. this is a billboard anybody any kid can be walking by this you know or any it's, kid can turn on the tv and see someone shot in the head like the lord doesn't yes. want that the lord the lord doesn't want I mean we we've entered into all somebody has to do is look back to the 1950s okay a mother and a father, a married couple on TV were not allowed to be shown in the same bed. Oh, I didn't Do you know think that. we've come a long way with what we allow on the screen? Yeah, that's so true. I mean, we just took a dive. <laughs> yes. We took yes. a really big dive. And, you know, there was this powerful message that um, I read from a visionary um, who her name is Gisela Cardia, and there's a website if you people are interested in, in more of what heaven is saying. Um, in addition to the news of the warning, it's called www.countdowntothekingdom.com. Okay. And you can translate on the right upper hand of the screen, everything into Spanish or whatever language you read. But saying that Basically, we've we've entered into a time when people have completely lost sight of there being such a thing as sin. Sin has become completely normalized. It's yeah. what is seen on the screen is a lot of things that is actually mortal sin, which could take us mortal sin means it's serious matter done with full consent of the will and um and without any coercion and and the person basically knows what they're doing they know it's not right mm -hmm. they do it anyway they know it's pretty serious and they're in their right mind you know they're not being forced into it they do it of their own volition of their own free will mm -hmm. what just <laughs> just one of those actions can separate a person from God forever. Just one. Oh, me. So, so the message here before the warning, everyone, mm -hmm. if you're Catholic, you've got to run to confession. Confession is your, is your freedom ticket. Confession mm -hmm. is your joy. The sacrament of confession unburdens you from anything that you've attach yourself to that could harm you the lord doesn't want you in unnecessary pain and agony and distress and removed from him he's the source of all joy all yeah. light all yeah. hope he's the reason why we're alive he's everything yeah. he created the universe he created you me every single mm -hmm. person watching this he knows your every thought he knows your every move he knows everything about you yeah. and he's love Mm -hmm. And he's love. Mm -hmm. And so he wants to lift you up into his arms in heaven when you die, where there is no more suffering and there are no more tears. And he wants us all to experience the warning with a twinge of that as well. Yes, it'll be hard. It'll be hard for me. I have a very sinful past, but I also know that I'm trying. Mm -hmm. I think when you know that you're trying and you're leaving mm -hmm. behind things that you're like, yeah, that, that didn't feel quite right. You know, mm -hmm. I was kind of unsettled in my spirit when I did like, like everyone around me seemed to say it was okay. Like it was no big deal. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. can I read one of the messages? From, yes, please. From one of people, because there's, because yes. one of the questions, um, I know you sent me questions to prepare, but one of them was, well, how do we pre prepare for this? And yes. And the big thing is, is confession. Confession is like an, um, it's a easy exorcism, literally 
Jesus will be like, oh, is that, is that bad spirit bothering you? Let me drag it back to hell. Oh, honey, is that mm. also, I forgive you. I forgive you completely. You're completely forgiven. Don't worry about it. Can I take that away from you? That depression, mm-hmm. that sadness, that, that compulsion, that thing mm-hmm. that, that was bothering you. Let me, let me, let me take that away from you. Why are that's free? Like mm-hmm. why <laughs> after the warning, there will be long lines for confession. Mm-hmm. Lot people will be a little bit confused, not know what to do. Long lines, like mm-hmm. Catholics will be <laughs> mass baptisms. So many beautiful things are going to happen. So yeah. if you're Catholic and watching this, if you're Protestant Christian and watching this, know that it's going to be a beautiful time of the Christian church is finally coming together. Jesus said, I pray that we be one. Satan wants to sift you like wheat, but I've prayed that you be one. This is his chance to finally start bringing us together. It's going to be a glorious time, but I should say the meat, speaking of the media, yes, the media will come in to take the grace away. I was going to ask about that because um, I was, uh, I was, watching some videos about uh, Father Michel Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. And in one of them, he was mentioning, just to recap a little bit, this is going to be a moment in time that is expected to happen in our generation. Um, That, like Christine was saying, we are going to be going on about our lives, right? Driving on an airplane, Oh, I forgot Plain, to mention uh, the freeze. Are you going to mention the freeze? I was, yes. yes. I was just, can you I please forgot. mention yes. that? No, freeze? go ahead, like how, please. You like, I want to, no, I want to, I want the audience to know or get more of an idea of how the event will look like and how it will happen. And so go ahead, please, because you know more than me. I want to do this. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 go ahead, do it. Um, Yes, I, I for, thank you. I forgot that moment. So I mentioned that it'll be five to f- 15 minutes in earthly time. No one will see this because every person will be so in their own internal experience. Yeah. And the same thing happened in Fatima. I don't know if people know, and there's um, a famous apparition in the early 1900s in Fatima Portugal that's why we call our lady sometimes the mother of god our lady of fatima in yes. which 70,000 people were present when the sun dislodged itself from the sky and came hurtling down on a rainy day toward people people thought they were going to die and they all started confessing their sins And so Mm -hmm. not one of those people thought at that moment, Hey, I wonder what Sally's doing. (laughs) (laughs) Right. No, they were so into the moment of their own experience. Yes. I mean, we'll, we'll have, we'll be having an internal experience, every one of us. And then after that, by the way, when the sun went back into the firmament, everything was completely dry. Another part of the miracle, but so God can do anything. He created he created time, he created matter, he created us. So when, when, if you're watching this and thinking, well, how can God do that? Well, how did he create you? Life. Exactly. I mean, how do you do that? <laughs> Have we mm-hmm. ever tried? <laughs> I, mm-hmm. I fail, you know, I could, mm-hmm. can't even create an amoeba. So I don't know. <laughs> Let alone the cell, right? Yeah. Well, I'm not yeah. very good at that. Mm-hmm. Although we'd be doing too many things with genetics right now. But so what he'll do is time will freeze because you'll think, well, how can a pilot driving a plane experience the warning Mm -hmm. if it's all going to be at the same time everywhere on earth? And as you mentioned, literally time will stop in the sense of everyone will be frozen in time. Yes. We won't see that. It It would be kind of cool to see. Mm -hmm. The plane will stop. The person on the bicycle will stop. The person in the middle of a track race will stop. So, but th- this doesn't mean that if the airplane stops, it's going to fall. No. Nope. Or that if you're driving, you're going to crash. Right. So it'll be more like, like literally you're going to freeze and you're going to go with your consciousness to. To that place. To that Granted, place. that's very interesting. I hadn't thought of this, but when you, 
you come back and you still have to be flying a plane, that's going to be tough. Oh, wow. <laughs> God's yeah, going to have to give the God's and you're still riding a bike. You might oh, fall off. I mean, yes. God's going to give the grace to, yes. to continue with whatever thing you were just doing. He'll give us the grace. He doesn't want anyone hurt. This is all to help. But as I was saying with the media afterwards, the media is going to come up with uh, what they call a scientific explanation. Mm -hmm. And a lot of science, true scientists are being silenced right now. A lot of false science is being brought forward. And this is all going to be in that vein of, oh, something, they'll say something like, we've discovered that there was a solar flare at mm -hmm. that very same moment that everyone experienced this. And this caused an alteration in people's thoughts. And so that's mm -hmm. why everyone had this experience. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. So on our cell phones, on, on our screens, everywhere around us, we're going to be told a lie. And that's mm -hmm. going to be a real serious problem because if we've seen something difficult, the natural human inclination is to not believe it or deny it because it's too painful mm -hmm. rather than to run to confession, say sorry and be healed of it. Mm -hmm. So we have to really be, be aware of that. And I guess I'm focusing on the, the, the words from he Germany this time more than ever, but it's very interesting what, let me see, this is Jesus himself saying this in the 1940s. My love has planned this action before the creation of the world. People do not listen to my calls. They close their ears. They resist grace and reject my mercy, my love, my merits. This is where I mentioned before, the world is worse than before the deluge. This is in the, the 1940s. Think of that. That's wow, now that we're worse than that. Yes. Yes. It agonizes in a quagmire of sin. Hatred and greed have infiltrated human hearts. All this is the work of Satan. The world lies in dense darkness. This generation deserves to be wiped out, but I wish to show it my mercy. The cup of God's anger is already spilling over onto the nations. And when we say God's anger, he gets angry at sin. Like if a child is beaten or a woman is raped, he's angry. He wants to save the person doing the damage, but he's always angry at sin because it hurts us, you know? So, so if we think God's so angry and mean, it's not that. No. The cup I'm, of so God glad. I'm sorry you said that. I'm so glad you said that because I had a conversation recently about someone, about somebody said, if God speaking about the old Testament, and it was about the moment where uh, Moses wanted to take everyone out of Egypt and the angel, I don't know if I'm translating this correctly or not, but like there's an angel of de la muerte or of darkness or something that's going to take the firstborn chi child oh, uh -huh. in Egypt, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And somebody was saying to me, it's just that the, 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 the God in the Bible in the Old Testament is so... It has so much anger and so much rage and so much. And, and so how could he dare to kill all these little kids? And I was like, wait a second, hold on one second. First of all, he's not killing. These are lives, all of our lives belong to him. Mm. So uh, this is, by the way, this is just me speaking, you know, in that way. But I, I'm like, because going along those terms, you would say, you know, when you die, when I die, Oh, God's killing me. No, that's not true. We're like going back to him. So these souls were the souls of the innocence that were like, what I'm trying to say with this is going back to your, your, your thought. God is not ang angry at it, at us. It's anger, angry at sin, angry at, you know, all those, these horrible spirits and energies that take us away from goodness. He's very angry. Yeah. We'd and want, we want, we want, him to, would be. we'd want him to be angry. Exactly. Because I'm a mom. Let's say I'm not a mom, but let's say I'm a mom and my, my kid 
is going on, you know, a weird path, I'm going to sometimes going to go, hey, come over here. It's over here. It's over this way. Right. So yeah. and because I love my kid. So and we're going to see I'm glad you said that, too, because we're going to see a lot of things that if we don't understand how loving God is, if we don't understand that there is a, there is a terrible place that souls can go, that God is trying to rescue us from, then things aren't going to make any sense. It's better to die than to commit a mortal sin. Mm -hmm. Like we think it's better to live at all costs, even yeah. if we're not living, even if we're not alive. Mm -hmm. Life is here and it's there. Life is, both. life is with God. That's life. Mm -hmm. It's not whether we're breathing or not. Life is the soul. Mm -hmm. So people... I pray that everyone wakes up to the fact that we're living for God and we're living for our souls, that this is, this is something, I mean, I've got flesh, but this is, this is a, a temporary home. It's a vessel. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And so speaking of God's mercy, the message goes on to say, the angel of peace will not delay in coming down to earth. I want to heal and to save mm -hmm. through the wounds that bleed. Now mercy will win and justice triumph. So God's going to win. God's going to win. And it might look really crazy. It might look like, oh my gosh, this terrible thing happened in this certain area of the world or whatnot. And we're horrified. But we have to remember that even in horrible things, God is in control. Because as you said, is God killing or is God rescuing people? Rescuing. That's what I was trying to say. No, it's rescuing. Rescue. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and yeah. And the, and the wars and the, like those things, we're doing it ourselves. God hates war. Because exactly. Because also God is so given he gave us free will. And what do we do with that free will? Then is the question. Do we do good? Do we not? And that, that's, you know, the, the predicament of life. But it's, to me, the warning sounds like a beautiful, merciful. It doesn't sound, it is a beautiful, merciful It's a act. beautiful, beautiful mercy that we all need. Because imagine if you have done things, and by the way, we should all live our lives in a good, from a good place thinking this way, but imagine you just die. You didn't get the chance to get the warning to then have an illumination of consciousness to go through your life, being able to see your doings, your good doings and your wrongdoings. You don't do that. And then all of a sudden you transition and there you are in, 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 in hell or in purgatory or in like what, and you didn't get a chance. He is giving us with this warning and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's that chance. Absolutely. It's such, such a kind gesture, such a merciful, merciful gesture.